I'm feeding that old bad dog. And, and so right now the, the new dog is a little puppy and doesn't have that much strength over the will, but it comes with that omnipotence of God and starts growing as you drink down the washing water of the Word, that pure spiritual milk of the Word. And it starts. this dog starts strengthening and getting stronger and bigger. And then this dog, you starve this dog, the bad dog, you starve it. You don't give it what it wants. You don't, you don't, you don't think those thoughts, those, what, talk those words, speak those words, get in those conversations, watch those movies. And you start starving that old dog. And you crucify him. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the, the passions of the flesh. And, and then and you, this dog starts getting stronger. And then after a while, you're like, wow. You, you, this is, you, you know, you, you, and it's not in our strength. This is not by strength nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember, and that's why it says, if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you shall live. What does that mean? That means that if I go and become a Mormon and I try to do all this stuff on my own strength and, and be a good person in my own strength, I can be a good person right on my way into hell. Because that's, we can't, no flesh, flesh shall boast before the Lord. I am not saved because of my good works, but my good works are evidence of my salvation. My good works could never save me. You got that scale. You got on this side, you got the, the, the a debt, an infinite debt, because I sinned against an infinite being. I incurred an infinite debt. And on this side of the scale, how am I ever, as a finite being, ever going to tip that scale in my favor? It's impossible. It's illogical. They need to start teaching logic in school. I mean, because it's just impossible. It's illogical. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. It's a, it's a, it's a futile uh, uh, attempt. A futile, a futile. It's, it's, it's illogical. I could never, no matter how many times I, I go and do good things, if I lived a billion lives, I could never tip that scale in my, in my favor. That's why Christ, the Messiah, our Redeemer, our sacrificial lamb, had to be fully God and was and is and always will be fully God and fully man. See, in a sense, like I've said before, he could take it and put his hand on the human and put the hand on God and he's the only mediator between God and man. And so, excuse me, seven things God hates, six that are detestable to him. Now, this, is, this, is, does, this doesn't mean that there's only seven things that God hates. God hates a lot more than just these. But I wanted you guys to, to have a, a, an idea of, of what, what does God like and what does he not like. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I really appreciate you guys' attentiveness. I really do. I, I can't say that enough. I, I really do. I, 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 I love that. Um, you know, I that means a lot to me. You know, I, I don't care about numbers. I I'd do this if it was just me and you in the room. <laughs> you know, I can really care less about numbers. Um, but I just I really I it, it means a lot to me when I see your guys' attentiveness. It's probably because you guys never heard any of this before. I mean, it, nobody's nobody's teaching it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have because you've been coming here for months. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but um, so on the cross, God displayed His righteousness. He displayed His love. He displayed His wrath. He displayed His anger. He displayed His mercy. It's kind of like this. I think Paul Paul Washer says it again. I, I know I quote the guy a lot, but he's one of the he's he's one of the few pastors that I found that that are actually. Uh, you know, teaching uh, the gospel really, um, uh, and, and it's just it's it's. Um, I've walked out of the last three churches that I've been to. I've just got up and walked out because of what I see. It just breaks my heart. I got to go find a place and cry. Um, uh, and, and and God has put a seal on my heart for His church. God has put a, a love on my heart for His church. Um, you know, I, I don't see these things as, as though I'm better than anybody or pugnaciously. I know that a lot of pastors aren't happy unless they're putting others down. Uh, my intention isn't to be pugnacious, meaning argumentative. My, my intention is 
my, I, I, it breaks my heart. I do get angry. I get angry, but I get angry at the, the fact that the people are deceived. I mean, the, the pastors themselves are deceived, you know, um, and, it, and it, it, I get angry because they're deceiving others. And that's the, that's what I do get angry about that. I have an indignation over that. Um, yeah, indignation is like when you read the newspaper and you hear something bad in the news and you're like, man, that's not right. Right. And isn't that, isn't that, isn't that interesting how we we assume this right for ourselves uh, this right of indignation against evil, but then we deny or tend to deny God this right to indignation. I heard one person say, "Well, my God wouldn't do that." No, well, that's because your God's a false God and doesn't exist. It's a demon. <laughs> uh, so, um, because it, 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 faith has to be founded on truth. Otherwise, it's no, it's no good. Uh, faith without truth is, is not, not saving faith. Excuse me. Um, so how are we justified? Uh, we are justified because of the merit of Christ. The work of Christ in our behalf. The sacrifice of Christ in our behalf. The blood of Christ shed for us. You know, that's what we are bought for, bought with. The church, the, the twice born, we were bought with the blood of God. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. That is absolutely amazing. What an awesome God. Yep. What an awesome God. Oh, yeah. And so, so back to the pride. A prideful person said, rejects God's grace and mercy and says, no, no, I want, I want, I, I, because he's prideful. You know, pride is, is, is just, is wicked. And it's, it's interesting because you hear in, you know, all around the world, oh, you got to love yourself more. Oh, you got to, you got to have faith in yourself. You got to, this is all, these are Luciferian thoughts. These are satanic thoughts. You know, you know, if you were to go to the church of Satan and ask them what they believe in, I'll tell you what they believe in. Do what makes you happy. You got to love yourself more. If you like it and it makes you happy, do it. Your happiness is what's important. But what does the Bible say? You were bought by the blood of the Lamb. You belong to Him. You are not your own. You were made to glorify and honor God. That's the chief end of man. To, to know, enjoy, worship, Honor and glorify Christ. This is our this is this is our chief end, meaning this is our purpose. And and see this that's, that's the beauty of the gospel is is it, it strips us of our pride, it strips us of our self focus. Because self focus is the common ill. Self focus is the common ill. What happened at the fall was. Man, before the fall, and I get this from Tozer, before the fall, man, man's eyes were on Christ. And he worshipped God. And God sat on the throne of the heart of man. And that's a generic term for people. Sat, God sat on the throne of the heart of man and sat there unchallenged and reigned. And man was, was worshipped God, delighted in Him, cherished Him. God was his treasure and his focus. All of his thoughts were about God. And so what happened at the fall? Man kicked God off the throne of his heart and put self there. Now the man has no peace. All these blessings that God showered on the man and woman in the garden were to be exterior and subservient to the man. In other words, how do I put that? Okay, if I own a car... But my treasure is Christ, and, and the car is a gift from God to me. If I lose that car, my treasure is Christ, not the car. So my treasure is my God, not His gifts to me. So were He to strip me of those gifts, He would still be my, my treasure. So I've lost nothing, because He is my treasure. So there's a, there's a wickedness of, having, of, of, of possessing things. 
Man innately wants to, that little word, mine, mine, right? This is, it, it sounds innocent on paper, and again, Tozer says this, it sounds innocent on paper and in speech, mine. But underlying this is a wicked, wicked thing. Because man desires to possess things. He wants things. He wants to shove into this, this infinite hole in his heart because God was made, man was made by God for God that only God can satisfy. So he, but man tries to stuff all these things into his heart and satisfy this, this, in, this hole, this Christ-shaped hole that only Christ can fulfill. 